Hi and thanks for joining us for the Fusion 7 webinar. In my 35 year career when I started out in animation, motion control, opticals, when film was film, creating technology to solve shots was always part of the creative process. This year is 25 years of Fusion, from the in-house beginnings to today where it delivers for clients worldwide, from the biggest blockbuster films to commercials everywhere. Fusion has been a proven backbone to all studios. As I reflect on the past quarter century, I am amazed and humbled by the creative talents of our team that produces awesome visual application software. The artistry enthusiasm of our community that puts Fusion to work. Just look at the Fusion 7 webinar countdowns. They are created as a testament to the talented team of artists. So let's pass it over to Jeff, who's going to explain more. Thanks, Steve. Fusion's interface has always been incredibly robust and flexible, and in many cases, the envy of many other software companies. So much so that look-alike interfaces were implemented years after ION led the way through invention and innovation. These include the node view, the much sought after timeline view for exact source and tool timing purposes, as well as user defined filtering, and the rich spline view for precise animation controls. Notable mentions are the many sub views with scoping and measurement tools, which are consistently utilized and appreciated by our artists. Based on user requests, we have added a number of new UI enhancements. Let's begin by looking inside the actual tools themselves. Once a tool parameter is animated, you are also able to see the number value color change to reflect the animation. With Fusion 7, additional highlights have been added to the left side of the tool, which helps when spotting animation changes, which you might have missed in the past. For Fusion 7, color wheels have also been added to this group when color animation parameters have been adjusted. As well, within each tool, you will now have the ability to set both node base color and text color without having to continually access the contextual menu on the flow. Of course, to complete this feature, there's a drop-down menu to access subsequent node color selections and apply them to the current node. Let's move over to the preferences. Take note of the new 3D preferences. These prefs add new layout options to assist in your 3D setups and visualization techniques. To begin, Take notice that the grid space now has enable and disable toggles for individual grid elements as well as per grid sizing and color settings. Just as important is the ability to preset the near and far plane positions in the 3D views. There are preferences for both perspective and orthographic views. Beyond that, and more on the pre-visualization side, you could now define default lighting in the views based on light intensity and position. This leads us to changes in the flow view. To begin, for the purpose of better node alignment when nodes are added and connected to the flow, there is better positioning prediction, whether your flow builds horizontally or vertically. And then there's the alignment tool input connections. Feeding tools can now be easily constrained based on X or Y in the connection positions. This goes for multiple tools as well. Then there's the entire Fusion interface, which is now customizable. With the ability to simply rearrange tabs, this opens up a variety of new options. Embedded in the tabs, you can remove, undock, or add any major view. For example, you may want to have multiple instances of a flow view for a particularly large comp. 
The instance of the view will allow a zoomed out version for your overview and a zoomed in focused version as you work through the flow. As well, the ability to undock your view and save the view as a default layout is perfect for multi-monitor setups. In this example, you can see I have full interactivity on a spline and timeline view on a second monitor while doing my node selection on the startup screen. Of course, other tabs such as modifiers can be undocked and individually repositioned. Finally, all these views are easily modifiable in Fusion 7 utilizing the new drag and drop navigation system and these are just a few of the interface additions you'll be seeing in Fusion 7. Fusion's a major version number. It has a lot under the hood, core architectural changes. This means we'd redo the core technologies that will serve as a development platform for the future. We look at where the computing and technology platforms in five years are going to be. What can we do to make Fusion faster and more productive? How do we add features in the future? Iron is rare that we change the architecture. We redo the changes in the core. We build platforms to build upon. For example, the 3D system is going through a major revamp. While the current tools and, and functionality still exist, the limitations of OpenGL paradigm have been sidelined, meaning that the new 3D system is able to be expanded and handle scenes much better. While this does not seem to add functionality, it does allow for a better future as we add things to it. Let's have a look at some of these new features. Deep inside the core, the 3D engine has been undergoing another optimization cycle. Amongst the improvements are such diverse features as a Lambic import, the latest and greatest FBX library, velocity channel rendering and much more. The Point Cloud 3D has been revamped based on artists' requests. You can now select multiple points and not only publish or unpublish them, but create an image plane which is aligned to the selected point's position. Perfect for creating camera projections or for adding billboard-like elements. You can also create locators or 3D shapes directly at the selected points. This helps tremendously with adding objects to your scene. Displaying names and positions of either all or just the published points directly in the view also helps navigating your scene. The 3D renderer also comes with some new features. Apart from core changes for even better speed and quality, it now adds the velocity channel into the equation. It also comes with an overscan function, which scales the rendered image but does not change the actual image resolution. The domain clip option works similar to the overscan, but instead of rendering more content into the same resolution, it enlarges the data window beyond the image edges. These two options are extremely helpful for set extensions or when working with certain lens distort algorithms that want to pull in pixels from outside of the image. Another long-standing request are 3D splines. Fusion 7 now allows to view and manipulate motion splines directly in the 3D view. As you can see here, this adds a new level of interactive creativity. The Replace Normals tool allows the welding of position vertices and the recomputation of normals and tangents to fine-tune or modify, for example, the smoothing of a 3D model. In addition to the above, the preferences have been updated with a 3D page to set various options for the grid, like line width and color, for the perspective views like clipping planes and angle of view, as well as stereo mode options, default lights and much more to easily adapt to your individual needs. To streamline the exchange with other applications in your pipeline, industry formats have been updated or added. The update to FBX 2014 allows importing and exporting 3D data with recent versions of the format. 
Not only does this streamline the support for geometry and animation exchange, but 3D vertex colors or even 3D stereo cameras are now translating directly into Fusion. In this scene I imported from Maya, I get 3D stereo cameras with the proper settings directly into Fusion. Let's have a look at this example scene. It shows ambient occlusion baked directly into the vertex colors. Even transparency could be used with vertices. Talking about ambient occlusion. Fusion 7 comes with a new screen space ambient occlusion tool. Just pipe your rendered image with a ZDEF pass and a normal pass, as well as the original camera directly into the tool. It allows you to quickly calculate screen space and bit occlusion. Multiplied into your scene, this adds a great deal of realism as contact shadows or dirt is mimicked. Especially for large, highly animated scenes, Alembic has grown into a standard exchange format. This has been acknowledged at ION, and the new 3D system in Fusion now allows you to directly import Alembic data. Not only does this add flexibility to your pipeline, but it gives you real-time feedback on the animation. This skeleton loads and runs on my laptop, even with a usual hard drive disk. And this is even true if your scene grows. In contrast to FBX, Alembic shines in situations where meshes are animated or even topology changes, like in this example. And once again, with real-time feedback. Fusion is known for its certified color tools. On top of this, the OpenColor.io standard has been adapted. You may now transform colors according to the OpenColor.io config file or LUTs directly as tools or even as lookup tables. This allows you to set up a pipeline which runs across all applications that support OpenColor.io. Additionally, the linear workflow has been simplified. With Fusion 7, each creator type of tool, like a loader or background, as well as a safer, receives options to do the color space and gamma conversions right away. This includes gamma conversions as well as log to lin type of conversions for all major camera vendors. With these additions, you will be able to set up the color pipeline quickly according to your requirements. Fusion 7's volume system also has major new features, with features to create clouds with lighting, vortex tunnels, fire, and layered fog. It has unique relighting capabilities that are interactive by moving the light sources, the images will be relit quickly. One new feature is the noise function, and it's built in procedurally. This allows for creation of clouds and undulated fog without input of image volumes. This noise function will also be combined with volume images. Another new feature is projectors from the 3D system, which will cast as light through the volume. Here is stained glass as a projector, and fire projecting through a volume. This underwater shot has caustics and volume lighting integrated. With the expanded FBX import, 
and Alembic support, scenes from 3D animation applications are more easily treated within Fusion, where the extra channel passes can be generated on the fly. The final images have a better look. Roto is the backbone of VFX. It's one of the most used features in compositing. Fusion already has robust tool sets, has many shape controls, and point moving selection controls like Twist, which rotates selected points around. Note how the center of rotation is around the initial cursor position, so by moving the cursor to different places on the image, it will result in different rotations of the points. This is the same for scale, which will scale around the cursor center and individual X and Y sizing behaves the same way. Shape box for selected points to be boxed and manipulated for position, overall scale, independent scale, and nonlinear per corner shaping. There are several new advancements in Roto in Fusion 7 to speed up productivity. Onion skinning is one of the new features that displays the polygon hull shape at different times so you can view what the polyline shape is doing over various times. These hull shapes will highlight as you hover over them and display the frame numbers. Another feature is showing the plot of the spline points. This proves very handy during Roto as points will crawl their position, so the plot will let show the flow of the key points, making it easy to get points in the correct position over time. The onion skinning dialog gives various controls, like the number of frames between each hull and the number of hulls shown, show all, show next, or previous. Key will show keyframes only. By clicking on a hull shape, it will immediately go to that keyframe time of the roto mask. This makes it easy to navigate to different keyframes and add motion on points and clean up polyline roto flow. Another new major feature under development is Roto Assist, which uses edge detection algorithms to help snap spline points to the edges of a subject. There is a search radius that is settable, and when drawing points, it will find the edge close by and snap to that position. This makes outlining the subject much faster and easier. This helps when moving points on other frames to find the edges of your subject. Thank you for watching this Fusion 7 webinar. For more information, visit us at ionline.com.